Okay, good afternoon, folks. Welcome, welcome. I'm Matt Green. I'm the head of school here, in case you haven't seen me in about a year and a half or so, except on a television screen. Um, this has been a terrific weekend for us so far. I'm not sure if you got your copy of the GAM, but in it I referred to uh, not just arriving and surviving, but thriving. And what you're going to see tonight, today, is an example of a program that really um, found all sorts of creative ways to thrive uh, in challenging circumstances. I uh, had a moment of symmetry last night. The, um, we did our, our, our advanced film class, did a, did a film, did a movie. And uh, so last March, I was in Los Angeles when the lockdown came. And I was actually heard about it when I was at a, at a premiere of Mulan at a red carpet, at a red carpet event in Mulan. I was just watching. We were looking for YouTubers. But, uh, but, but last night, the film team had, the film group had their own red carpet. And then, uh, and then I thought about last spring, and when I was sort of hunkered down here by myself in the bunker at Mission Control, what I noticed were two things. One is the walls were completely blank, so I would encourage you to take a look at the building and see all of the fabulous artwork that's up now if you have an opportunity after the concert. But the most stunning thing about being in this school last spring was that it was utterly silent. And thanks to George Shar and Maggie Bossy and Paul Weller and so many others, um, music has returned to our building, and, um, and I couldn't be happier. I, I, George and I met in early April, and I don't know if I said this to him, asked him or told him, but I said, George, I don't care what safety protocols we have to, take to undertake, how many people we can get here, we're doing a live concert in front of an audience, nothing virtual this spring. And, he, and, and then I just said, go make it happen. And uh, that's what we get to do, heads of school. <laughs> and George made it happen. Um, because really, uh, above all, um, communal gathering is life affirming, but it really is the arts that are life affirming. So it's my great pleasure to introduce to you uh, Maggie Bossy, a terrific new member of our team, and the Falmouth Academy Chorus. Thank you. So I just joined Falmouth Academy in January and I was constrained by the pandemic, no more than eight kids in my chorus. And for the first two months, we sang with sort of gas masks on. Nobody could hear a thing. It was a really challenging way to um, start a chorus with a new director. However, I was really fortunate that I feel I got the eight best possible kids I could have asked for. <laughs> and we would have liked to have sung much more for you, but it, it just was really hard to put a program together under those conditions. So we have three pieces today. I'm going to introduce my accompanist, Donald Enos, who's a very old friend and colleague stretching back 40 years, and also a number, another member of the FA faculty, Norma Steiner, on viola in the first piece. And each piece will be introduced by a student. So first up is Lyric Buckley. The piece that we're going to start off with is called Shenandoah, and it was arranged by Mark Patterson. Many, many, many people assume that this is a happy and cheerful song, but it actually hides a very dark past. And it was really interesting to sort of explore this through emotions, um, through vocals. So here we go. <laughs> Long 
So the next piece we're going to be playing is called Seal's Lullaby by Eric Whitaker. He is one of my favorite chorus, uh, or chorus composers as well as band composers. I played a couple of his pieces. Um, I think it's just really beautiful and it's definitely been my favorite piece so far this year. I hope you enjoy. Oh, and the lyrics are written by Rudyard Kipling. Some of you might recognize that name. <laughs> i 
was a stretch, and that was the most satisfying thing for them to reach and stretch, or stretch and reach. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, our next and final song is called 900 Miles. It is a traditional folk song arranged by Greg Gilpin, and we have a solo sung by my sister, Alyssa McDonald. <laughs> Walking down this track, I'm walking, I'm walking, walking down this track. I'm walking down this track. It sure is good to hear a live chorus again, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's been 15 months since we've done a concert here. Um, Mrs. Bossy, thank you very much. So and, and students, Mr. Enos, congratulations. You know, in January, when um, Mr. Green came to me and said, we have to find a way to do this concert, I said, that's a great idea. How are we going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I said that after I left his office, of course. <laughs> and uh, we, it was, I, I did say that. We'll make it happen. It was a gutsy call, and it was great. So we are thrilled to be here. Uh, this has been planned for four months, and when we decided to start the chorus in January, we limited the number to eight for obvious reasons. And I personally believe that when someone is speaking or singing, you need to see their facial expressions. So this was the way to, uh, to do that. So we're glad you're here. 
Now, here's something you don't hear too often at Falmouth Academy. Would you take out your smartphones now, please, audience? The program is on the smartphone. If you go to, in, the, in an effort to avoid handing out papers, and you'll be able to download this and save this for your archives, and this is also being filmed and will be available early in the week. Um, if you go to falmouthacademy.org, follow your nose to academics, which is sometimes hard for me, and then go to arts, uh, you'll scroll down to the page and you'll see Spring Concert and you'll find that program. What's going to happen next is we're going to the second half of this concert, which is inside. <laughs> Brandenburg Concerti 
written in Germany by Bach before 1721, during the Baroque period of music. Number three, which we are playing today, was originally scored for three violins, three violas, three celli, and a harpsichord. But our arrangement by Forrest Etling is a challenge, because each of us will be playing an independent line. It is the nature of Baroque music to overlap the melody, so at different times we all play a melodic line while others play the harmony. And within a fraction of seconds, the roles reverse. So, please enjoy.
Uh, my name is Steve Gregory. I'm the newest member of the music faculty uh, at the FA family, and it's been a terrific fun, terrific fun so far for me. Uh, and I wanted to thank Mr. Shar for bringing me into the fold. And I won't make Abby stand there too long. <laughs> but I really want to thank the band. Uh, they really, uh, what a delightful bunch of kids. <laughs> Uh, you know, specifically, rock music, uh, popular music, is folk music, right? Very, uh, very little of it is written down. So they're really relying on me and my random body movements to instruct them what to do. And this didn't really go over well the first couple of rehearsals. You know, one boy asked me what this meant, and I said, I'm just fixing my hair. And he says, does this mean to stop or start? I said, I'm not sure. We'll figure that out next time. But it really is a skill that the rock musician develops, and that is um, all these sort of um, unspoken um, uh, symbols and, and movements and so forth are really important. Um, so if you see me moving around a little bit, um, it, it's on purpose. <laughs> so with that, I'll give it over to Abby. Hello everyone, I'm Abby Newbert and we are the Amplifiers, otherwise known as the F.A. Rock Band. Now we've heard some lovely music this afternoon, but what we're going to be playing for you is a little bit different considering that we are a rock band. And to honor that difference, the first song that we are going to be playing for you it's Black Magic Woman by Santana. <laughs> Wyatt, take it away. <laughs>
the LB. Edge of 17 by Stevie Nicks. Connor works on the drums, everybody. Take it away.
months ago, you probably would have called it rough. Um, this band has a really great knack for learning things in the days leading up to the concert and at the concert itself. It almost always is our best performance at the actual show. And I was in the car on the way here with a couple other members of the band, and I was thinking about introducing this next piece with a couple of our like most daring last minute saves. Um, but the truth is, we can't remember any of them, because it always comes together, and we always have a great show. Um, and I think that's what we have here today. And if the next song doesn't go well, you know I jinxed it. So this one is uh, Smooth by Santana. You never know what you're going to get. I love it. Thank you. You know what is a scene you're all Thank you. 
Hi guys, uh, my name is Tyler Harmon. I'm a junior here at Mount Academy. And um, the next song we're going to be playing is in the Music Majors Rock Band. I think I'm speaking to the mic. So it's in the Music Majors Rock, uh, rock Band, which is like a collection of kind of like people who are very serious about music and want to pursue it further in life. So uh, the song that we're going to be playing is Money by Pink Floyd, and it's off one of my top favorite albums of all time, Dark Side of the Moon. It came out in 1973. And something that's really cool about the song is that it's played in 7-4 time, which for anybody who's not a musician just means it's really complicated. And Logan, can I get you to play the bass line? Count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When normally songs are played in rounds of four or eight or twelve or sixteen or some multiple of two or four, which just makes it kind of glide very easily and the transitions are all smooth. Well, in this song, they're not. So uh, that's the song we're going to be playing. I hope it comes out really well. Good job. 
This is my last time up, I promise. Um, so the next segment of our show is the five senior, the five of six senior solos, or maybe it's four of five. Not quite sure. So we have a segment of senior solos coming up now. Um, and this part means a lot to me and a lot of the other people. I see there's a whole segment of seniors here who come to support their friends. Um, every year, the seniors at FA, um, anyone who's interested, who's been involved in music during their time, can put together a solo that highlights them. We had Trevin earlier um, with the sax solo, and we're going to have a variety of different musical pieces now. And it means a lot. I've been in the band for six years to see everyone come up and do their solos. So excited. So the first one is Jordan Watson, who's doing Four Good from Wicked. So, 
Our next senior solo is by someone who's very close to me, James Goldbach, and he's singing an original piece called Kate. Hello, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming out today uh, for all of our senior solos and the amazing band. Another round of applause for Jordan. And for Mr. Shar for organizing everything.
I pour colored cheeks and crystal covered eyes. I know how our hearts be, mine for yours and yours for mine. Take my mask off as it's fogging my glasses. Um, so, Luca McDonald and I uh, have been friends since the very first days of ninth grade uh, because we have found uh, our common love of music and our common love of um, psychoanalysis of each other, <laughs> spending hours in the car talking about our different characteristics and tendencies and we both have parents in the uh, social working field, so, you know, that's always great. And so we bonded over that, and bonded over our music, and, uh, you know, Luca, uh, for those of you who don't know, which is, must be nobody at this point, Luca has perfect pitch and synesthesia, and so she has a very interesting perspective on many things, um, including music. Uh, which is just one of the reasons why I and so many other people love her so much. So please welcome Luca McDonald playing Fandango.
have done it without perfect pitch. <laughs> Next up is one of my best friends, Maisie. I'm really sad because we're going to be going to college really far from each other. Like, it's it's so, the distance is just so much. I mean, it's, it's really, I don't know what I'll do without her. This is a joke, guys. We were in the same college. Right. And she's playing the five, Love is the Five and Dime. Before I started, I just wanted to thank my Uncle Mike for the guitar, and I'm sorry that he couldn't be here today, so this is for him. Thank you. 
with me for, well, she's done chorus basically every year, every year, since she came to F.A. Um, she's a really, really talented singer, um, and she's got a really excellent piece to play next. It is um, Rainbow Connection. <laughs> Someday 
They were there Alyssa, don't go. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call all of the seniors back up on stage for a reprise. Come on up, seniors, please. Trevin, come on up there and join us. Jordan, congratulations. Oh. President McKee and Mr. Joey. Having you and Dan over these years. Uh, who's next? Alyssa. Oh, amazing. Come over here, amazing. You know, as I, some of these students I know more than others, and as I got to work with them on their solos, every story is touching. And Maisie's story was um, that, that song by Nancy Griffiths, The Love of the Five and Dime. It, 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 come here and tell the audience just about that. So. Uh, back before my brother was born, sorry, I'm gonna start crying. My mom used to play that. <laughs> In the, in the car, he was like, for this one CD that you have, thanks. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, the version that she had, she had this like, it was like six minutes long. <laughs> like four of the minutes was just Nancy Griffith like talking about nothing. And <laughs> that was like back before I could understand like English really. <laughs> just, but. Yeah, that is a special song for me. You just turned into one crying machine this spring here in the music department. I'll tell you, it's a very emotional time. Alyssa, come forward. Now, now your story came to me from an unknown source. As most of the seniors have probably shared this story, that these folks, most of them have been involved in music for six years or close to it, and they've been where you are now and watched other senior solos. This is a very um, personal and touching moment for them, and Alyssa's been looking forward for this and singing that song for six years. Congratulations. <laughs> Connor, we don't have enough flowers here. James Goldbach. James. James. Uh, talented pianist, musician, composer. The song you heard him uh, perform today was called Cadence. And, and tell us a little bit about the genesis of that. So I'm sure this Genesis story will make several people uncomfortable, but I will tell it anyways. So, back in ninth grade, uh, I was new to Falmouth Academy, and uh, I have no friends, really, uh, at FA. I mean, yes, okay, Luke, you kind of count, I guess. We already told your story. So, one of my first uh, friends that I made and people that I talked to and hung out the most was a girl named Jordan Watson. And so it turned out, you know, a couple weeks go by, we start dating. First high school girlfriend, you know, pretty fun. Fast forward four years, probably 10 or 11 breakups and get back together <laughs> later. We're still here and very close friends and still alive thanks to the tolerance of our parents. And um, so I wrote that song about Jordan in 10th grade and sung it today. 
So, yep, that's the gist. James, I did not know that. <laughs> Jordan, they're, they're very special. I remember that. I do remember that. <laughs> Let's see, I think that about covers it for flowers. Uh, oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. No, Luca. It's <laughs> okay. Luca and uh, violin and jazz band and orchestra and string ensemble. And I, it's just been a joy. You've been here four years as well. Yeah. I can remember when they were building the Simon Center five years ago, and we played a concert here in the gym, and we were set up over there, and Ruka and her mom and dad were in the audience, and Gloria was probably there too. And I think you left there and said, we're going to Falmouth Academy. And I said, I'm going to Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, what do you want me to talk about? That? <laughs> Do you want me to talk about Fandango? Yeah. Okay. Um, that was a song that, um, it's been one of my favorite songs for, I mean, I, I first learned that song in seventh grade, and I learned it in a day because I liked it so much, and um, I won an award with it, so I decided to pull it back out of the closet, and it's, I, yeah, I like that song a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see, Mrs. Steiner, please come up. I have flowers for you. This is Lucas Violin teacher. And the leader of our string ensemble. Congratulations. I love it. The teachers are in the room here. Here's the teachers. Um, and Steve Gregory and Maggie Bossy. Come up here, Maggie Bossy. Show them, what do you have in your hand? That doesn't look like her. <laughs> also plays trumpet, and we are thrilled to have her. Maggie is the found, not the founding force, but the moving force behind the Chatham Corral, and really took that corral to a very high class status. Congratulations. for the afternoon. Thank you for sharing your students with us. This is a very, your children, this is a very emotional time for all of us. I'd ask that you uh, leave the gymnasium in single file if you can. You can use any one of the doors uh, this way, of course, and just take your time. Come on up and congratulate. Thank you so much. <laughs>